Hi everyone, my name is Kaylee and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay everybody, so it is currently like 10 o'clock on Saturday. I just posted a video earlier in the day and this one is probably going to be posted at like 1 in the morning, I'm not gonna lie. But happy early Halloween and let's just get into today's story time. So I'm gonna bring you guys up close. There we go. Oh my gosh, I literally need to get new headbands. I don't know where any of mine are and I think I'm running out. By the way, um, I did post a YouTube video earlier today so if you didn't see that one, go check it out. Out. But before we get into today's story time, I'm going to do my quick usual little rundown for most of the video I'll be looking in this direction because my mirror is over here and I would like to see what I'm doing I do tell these story times in a first-person point of view So if you don't like that then you can leave and these story times are sent in by anonymous people I also literally have to buy a new makeup mirror because mine is broken. You gotta love it Okay, so story time about how my husband's ex-girlfriend kidnapped our children, you know at this point I don't even know what to say I don't even know what to say. Okay, so a little background information. I was 24 and a stay-at-home mom whenever all this happened. But we are going to rewind a little bit. And I'm going to tell you a backstory on how my husband and I met. And a little bit about our relationship. You know, before we get into all the bullshit. So my husband and I both come from different walks of life. And by that, I mean I come from an extremely wealthy family like if you guys have ever seen the great gatsby movie that type of rich right there i never had any financial issues or anything like that but my husband on the other hand he had grown up in foster care his whole life because his mother decided to leave him at the hospital as soon as he was born like literally she took her ivs out and everything by herself and just dipped well, the foster home that he was in wasn't great either because the guy and the girl who took care of him and their other kids really did not give a fuck about these children. They only wanted the check. That is like so bad. Like I hate hearing stories like that. It always breaks my heart. Anyway, so my freshman year of college, I would always go to this coffee shop that was like five minutes away from campus. I would usually go there to study and tutor some of the kids that were in my class, but I would only go there at night because I don't know if this is weird or not, but like I retain information better before I go to sleep. Well, at least better than I would if I like studied during the day and then just went on with the rest of the day not even thinking about that shit. Well, there ended up being a shooting right down the street from the coffee shop. So they started closing at six o'clock instead of nine o'clock, which was super annoying. And yes, I could have just went to a different coffee shop, but I was a regular at this one. So I feel like it low-key would have been cheating. Also, I just really like this coffee shop. So that's like the other reason. So usually all my classes would be done by three o'clock for the day. And because I wanted to study as late as possible, I would go to the coffee shop around four o'clock and then stay until close. Well, literally the first day that I had ever been to that coffee shop that early in the day, I walk in and I see this guy sitting at one of the tables and oh my God, he was like the most attractive guy I've ever seen in my life. And I was literally see him there every single day like same time and everything but i was super against going up to him because hello this was during the time whenever if a girl went up to a guy she looked desperate as fuck like that girl was desperate for a man if she is going up to a guy and asking them out or asking them for their phone number personally i think that we have taken this whole girls need to start making the first move thing a little bit too far Okay, like I think I've said this before to be honest, but I can't remember the last time a guy made a move on me And I'm tired of hearing oh, it's because you're intimidating Like you're so pretty that they like are too scared to talk to you. Well, bitch now I feel ugly So what now? Anyways, like does anybody else feel like that or is it just me? Never mind. Well, I'm not gonna lie Okay, I wish I would have just went up to him and talked to him and saved myself the embarrassment of doing things that I thought were like low-key but actually high key desperate as fuck. So his table was right next to the coffee bar, okay? Like here's the coffee bar, okay, right there. 
here's his table and here's my table and our tables were on opposite sides of the room but the room was small enough to the point where we were still kind of close to each other well over the course of a month right we are playing this hard to get game with each other okay we would make eye contact and you know do little sly things to get each other's attention okay whether it was him yawning or going <clears throat> you know really loud or it was me tapping my pen off of a notebook or tapping my nails off the table. This might sound like a cute little romantic story on how my husband and I met, but in all honesty, this was fucking exhausting. Like literally all I wanted was for this kid to come up to me, but no, nope, couldn't have that. Could not have that. Anyways, let's get on to the desperate shit that I did to try and get this man's attention. So number one, um, I started, so number one, I started going to the coffee shop earlier than him and getting a seat that was close to his table. So that way I was closer to him, obviously. And then I started going up to the coffee bar like 12 times within the two hours that I spent at that coffee shop. Just so that way I could walk past him and you know, hopefully he would try and talk to me but guess what none of that shit worked nothing i was getting fed up so now i'm at the point where i'm like literally questioning everything okay i'm like okay maybe he doesn't actually like me maybe i have been taking every single thing that he's been doing a little bit too serious like could he just be yawning instead of trying to get my attention it's highly likely um but then the one day i got there super early and what did i decide to do i decided to take his seat why did i do this so hopefully he would like come up to me and say something or you know he would like sit down at the same table but instead he went over and he sat at my table so to me this looked like he was playing a game with me well fast forward two months yeah i realized i definitely took everything out of context and literally like either this kid just didn't get the hint or i just didn't get the hint that he really did not like me at all because i literally stalked this kid i low-key felt like joe goldberg from the series you on netflix by the way if you haven't watched it 10 out of 10 recommend great show but i knew what time he would come to the coffee shop what time he would leave like for example every day he would come into the coffee shop at 3 p.m on the dot and then he would leave between 5 35 and 5 40 and how did i know this because i started leaving class early to get to this coffee shop before him just so that way i could figure out what his schedule was i know i sound like a very dangerous obsessed person it's bad but the truth is i just had a really big crush on him okay and i could not figure out why this kid did not want to talk to me I mean, he could have had a girlfriend, but like, if he just would have talked to me, I would have figured that out and I would have left him alone by now. Because I dead ass would even start to pack my stuff up a few minutes before that 5.35 and 5.40 period or whenever the hell I said that he would leave. And I would do this just so that way we could walk out the door at the same time and hopefully he would talk to me. But uh, that didn't work. So then the one night, the coffee shop is having a poetry reading and thankfully because i was in this little stalker weirdo phase i was getting to the coffee shop first and i got a table and every other table in there was completely filled no seats or anything the only open seat actually was the one that was right across from me and everybody had been coming in asking if like they could use that chair at their table and i'm like no sorry i'm saving it for someone knowing that I wanted him to come and sit at my table. It literally would have sucked though if he walked in and he knew somebody and he was like, hey, yo, can I borrow this chair? And I would have been like, <laughs> anyway, so I'm watching the door and he finally walks in. And you know, I see him looking around to see if there are any open seats and I see him kind of roll his eyes and then he looks directly at me and I like hurry up and look back down at my computer. I'm like, do 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 do, not looking at you, not paying attention to you because I don't care about you, do do do. Well, while I'm on my computer, he comes over and he's like, hey, can I sit here? And I'm like, yes, 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 fuck yes. Literally, this is like the first time this man has ever talked to me, ever said one word to me. Now, obviously, I said yes, he could sit there. And, you know, um, when he sits down, I go up to the coffee bar because I'm like, okay, maybe I should just get him and I a coffee, you know? Maybe maybe that'll work. Maybe, maybe that'll do it because then I'm not looking too desperate. I'm just looking like a nice person, okay? I mean, at this point, though, I don't think it really mattered if it looked 
desperate or not because of all the other shit that I've done. So, you know, I go and I grab the coffee and I come back over to the table and I'm like, hey, like, do you want some coffee? And he's like, oh yeah, thanks. And then I accidentally spill a little bit on the table. So I go back over to the coffee bar and I grab some napkins and I come back over to the table and you know, I'm like, thinking I'm starting a conversation with him and then I look up and he has his AirPods in already and he's just staring down at his computer. Yeah. Talk about embarrassing. Like what the fuck? And he didn't even look at me once the entire time. So at that point, guess what I did? I gave up and I actually gave up this time. There was no, you know, like, oh, like, you know, he did this. So maybe he still does like me. Nope, I was completely done. Done, 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 done. Like I went back to my normal routine at the coffee shop of going there at 4 p.m. and leaving at 6 p.m. And I even went as far as to not sit at my regular table and instead go sit at this bar that was facing the window so that way I wasn't facing towards him at all. Well, fast forward to the summertime. Um, I definitely wasn't going to the coffee shop as much, but I would still go there to tutor some of the kids that I was tutoring during the school year just to make a little bit of extra cash. Well, you know, it's a Tuesday and I am at the coffee shop. Well, you know, after I get done tutoring this one kid, I'm packing up my stuff and I turn around and I realize that he's sitting there. But I don't care, I don't let it phase me because like I said, he is dead to me. Dead, gone, bye, see you later. So I grab my shit and I start walking back to my apartment and my apartment was maybe like a 20 minute walk away from the coffee shop. So about five minutes into this walk, I hear running behind me and I glance behind me real quick and I see that it's him running. And you know, I wasn't gonna get my hopes up again. So I just told myself, you know, oh, he's running because he's taking a jog. He's not interested. He don't wanna talk to you, girl, keep going. Don't look at him again. Don't fucking do it. But actually he stops running and starts walking right beside me. And he says, hey, what's up? Really? Really? I'm like weirded out. I'm like, what the fuck does this guy want? Like. So I literally just say, oh, so now you wanna talk. And he just starts laughing like he fucking knew. He fucking knew. He knew. What a douche. Anyway, so he introduces himself and we are going to call him Brian. And to be honest, he didn't even need to introduce himself because every time that I would walk up to the coffee bar, I would be walking back and I would low key be like, you know, peeking at all of his shit, you know, like his names that were on his paper and stuff like that. Like I knew his first and last name. And I didn't even search him up on social media. I stalked him in person, which is actually sounds a lot worse now that I'm saying it out loud. Well, you know, we started talking and hanging out all throughout the summer and I found out the reason why he didn't try to make a move on me during the year when I was, you know, obsessing over him like a complete psycho, which actually funny thing, I told him everything that I did to get his attention. And he's like, oh yeah, I knew everything. He's like, I could tell. Yeah, so that was even more embarrassing. Anyway, so I guess the whole reason why he didn't make a move was because he was dealing with a situation with his ex-girlfriend and he didn't go into too much detail about it, but from what I knew about the situation, she was just a girl who didn't want to let go of her ex. You know, it actually sounded like she was super upset about the situation and I understand. I had a boyfriend in high school that I had dated for two years and one day he just told me that he didn't want to be with me anymore, completely cut off communication, just like all in one day. And I was pretty heartbroken about it for a minute. Anyway, so fast forward a few months, he asked me out and we become boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, and he was literally the perfect man. He is the perfect man. Okay, he is. Like this man literally kissed the fucking ground that I walked on, treated me like an absolute queen. My family absolutely loved him. My family didn't like a lot of my friends, not to mention boyfriends. Like for example, for Christmas, my dad literally paid off the rest of his college, literally paid for the rest of his schooling. To be honest, after that, I low-key thought that he was gonna leave because you know, once guys think that they're doing better than you, they just like decide that they're gonna up and leave you. And it wasn't that I thought he was a gold digger. I just thought, you know, now that like his school was paid for, he was just gonna be like, all right, sis, peace out, Girl Scout, I'm gone. But no, he didn't do that. It's kind of sad, the standards that we have for men nowadays. Like they're just like so low. It's disgusting. 
Well, literally right after Christmas and my birthday, which my birthday was on the 28th of December, I found out that I was pregnant with my daughter, Miley. And I was only 20 years old. I knew I was not going to get an abortion or give it up for adoption. So I decided to drop out of college and be a stay-at-home mother. Now, my family 110% felt some type of way about this shit, especially because I was only in my sophomore year of high school, but I didn't mind at all because I would have chose over and over again to spend every day at home with my daughter, spending time with her and just being there for her all the time. Well, my mom and my dad didn't like the idea of us living in separate apartments now that we had a baby on the way or living in an apartment in general. So he got us a town home in the suburbs that was like maybe 15 minutes away from campus and my dad also ended up getting Brian a car so that way he could drive himself to and from class but I want to say whenever my first daughter Miley turned two that's whenever shit started to get really weird. So, you know, I'm currently 21 years old. I'm about to be 22. I am very pregnant with my daughter, Catherine. Yes, I got pregnant back to back. Anyways, my brother and I are on the phone the one night and he was telling me how Brian had plans to propose to me. It was supposed to be a secret, but my brother is really bad at keeping secrets. So I found out literally the day that Brian told him. Well, fast forward the one night, Brian and I dropped Miley off with my parents and we went into the city to have dinner at this like rooftop place, which to be honest, I really wasn't in the mood for because like I said, I was pregnant as fuck. Catherine was giving me back problems and she was ready to pop out at like any freaking second. I was super confused when we got there though because he said that we were going to have the first course inside and then we were gonna finish the dinner outside on the rooftop which i literally only think he did that because he knew that like i couldn't wait to eat because i was pregnant and my appetite like i could eat enough to feed like a baby elephant so you know we finished our first course and then we are going onto the roof he has blindfolds over my eyes we walk out the door and he takes the blindfold off and my whole family is standing around on the rooftop and there's like this huge rectangular table in the middle that has enough seats it looked like for all of my family so that way we could all have dinner together there were rose petals everywhere there was like a little altar in one corner of the rooftop candles were everywhere and we walk over to the altar and miley my little baby comes over in her cute dress and she gives Brian a box and Brian gets down on one knee and proposes to me it was definitely one of the most amazing moments in my life and one of the most memorable ones not only because my husband proposed to me but also after we were all done eating dinner there was a dj that came out you know everybody was dancing for a little bit i'm dancing with miley and then all of a sudden my water breaks and i feel like i'm dying so you know got taken to the hospital popped Catherine out and finally we're going to get into all of the weird shit that started happening yeah. So it's currently July. We just brought Catherine home from the hospital. Thankfully, Brian is able to stay home with me all day, every day to help me take care of the babies. Well, the one morning I get up, I want to take a shower. So Brian's taking care of the girls because listen, I have not showered in five days. I felt disgusting. And before you go judging me, you try having a baby that literally cries all night all night like th like this was not miley was easy miley didn't cry she literally she would sleep through the night she was like an angel catherine she just liked seeing me suffer that's what it was anyway so you know i am in the shower and all of a sudden brian swings the door open comes in and he's like frantically talking to me and i like can barely understand a word that he's saying so i'm like okay slow down what's wrong he was like have you been outside at all and i'm like no why like i've literally been upstairs all morning we just woke up like 15 minutes ago. I was like, remember whenever I asked you if you could take the kids downstairs 15 minutes ago while I showered up here? And he was like, oh, okay, just checking. So I was really weirded out. And when I tried to ask him why, he would just be like, oh, nothing, nothing, you know, it's nothing. Which clearly there was a fucking reason because he ran up to the fucking bathroom like a bull in a damn china shop, ruining my peaceful mom time 
alone mom time well later on that day we're sitting on the couch and he's like oh by the way i'm having a security system installed tomorrow so then i ask him i'm like so does this have anything to do with why you ran up to the bathroom this morning and asked me if i went outside and he was like no 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 it's just that you know now that we have two of them in the house i just want to make sure that we're all safe so you know the next day the guys come in they install a bunch of cameras they install these like little monitors on the doors and the windows so that way when they open an alarm can go off if the alarm is set i mean you know i guess it's better to be safe than sorry but clearly it didn't do its fucking job because a few days later brian came home with a dog and i'm like oh honey you didn't say anything about us getting a dog he was like oh i just think it would be better for you guys to have more protection when i go back to school so at this point i stopped questioning his paranoia i don't understand it he won't explain it to me so i'm like all right whatever so you know i take his word for it the one morning i wake up and i go downstairs with the girls and i let rex out rex is the dog and i turn on his little machine that you know will spit out the tennis balls so that way he would be able to play and get his energy out for the day and i usually would leave him out there for about 30 minutes and like he was actually so freaking cute because like whenever the thing would run out of balls he would go and he would collect them all and then put them back in like you know the little bowl and then it would just start shooting them again we had a pretty decent backyard like it was all fenced in our fence was like pretty pretty high my husband is like 6'2 he has a hard time seeing over the fence well after i let rex out i come back into the house and so I'm in the kitchen, right? And in the kitchen, that's where the sliding glass doors are to the backyard. So that's kind of, you know, keeping an eye on the dog while keeping an eye on the kids. Miley is in her high chair eating her snacks while she's watching the kitchen TV. Catherine, I have her in one of those baby seats on top of the table, you know, the ones that like bounce on their own or something. And while I'm doing all this, Brian had went to the store to get some cold medicine for Miley because she wasn't feeling good. And after I'm done with the dishes, all of a sudden there's a knock on the front door. And I'm not used to the whole security system thing yet. So most of the time I never checked who was at the door before I went and opened it because like I never had that before so yeah I just didn't do it so you know I went to the front door and as soon as I open the door I hear a loud bang come from the kitchen and Miley starts screaming so I hurry up and run to the kitchen completely forget to close the front door because I thought that her height chair fell over or something like that so you know I get into the kitchen I'm looking to see if anything fell or if the kids were hurt and then I realized that Miley is like screaming and crying her face is all red and she's pointing at the glass doors and I look outside and I see Rex laying against the glass doors like his back is up against the glass doors and I'm just looking at him and he's not breathing or anything like that so now I'm absolutely I don't even know how to describe it. I am literally petrified because I have no idea what the hell is going on. Like I'm scared for my children and I's lives. So, you know, I'm holding Miley and I'm trying to get her to calm down whenever all of a sudden the security alarm goes off and I had it off already. So there was no reason for it to be beeping or doing any sorts of shit like that. So, you know, now Catherine's crying too. So I'm pick up both of them. I run over to the alarm system, which the glass doors are right here, okay, to the outside, like the backyard. And then right here on this wall, the security alarm is like right on this wall. So I run over to the system. I keep putting the code in, the right code, but it's it's not working. You know, I have Miley in one arm. I have Catherine in the other. And I'm putting in the code over and over again while I have both of them in my arms. And since I'm putting in the code, I have my back to the glass door. And I keep putting in the same code. And I put in the same code again. The alarm stops. But both of the sliding glass doors shatter. Literally, they just fucking shattered everywhere. So I run out the front door with both of my girls and we run over to my neighbor's house. I hurry up, I call Brian off of their phone because I left all of my shit in that fucking house. I did not want to go back in that house. And I told him what happened and he's like, oh, okay, you know, like um, I'll be home as soon as I can. I'm kind of dealing with my own situation right now. Love you, bye. What? <laughs> so now I'm shocked. Now I'm like, I pretty much just told you that your daughters and I almost got murdered and you're like, oh, I'm dealing with something, bye. So I call my parents and only my mom was able to come over and apparently my dad was dealing with Brian's situation. So, you know, my mom gets to the house, she calls the police. I'm trying to pull up footage from the cameras, but it just so happens that none of the cameras were working. So, you know, I 
am in the house i go upstairs i go and i grab some of my clothes some of brian's clothes so that way we can go and stay at my parents house and the girls already have like a bunch of shit there they pretty much have their own bedrooms at that house so i didn't have to worry about any of their shit anyways i walk downstairs and on the porch i'm about to walk down the stairs when a letter on the ground under one of my flower pots catches my eye and you know i open it and literally it just completely starts off the bat with do you really think he wants to be with you him and i were together first he'll always have love for me there will never be enough love for you in his heart once i tell him the truth about the kids not being his he'll leave you and he'll be back where he belongs aka with me so now i am way more weirded out than i was the first time i take a picture of it and i send it to brian and then i give it to the police and then you know the girls and i go to my parents house and finally around six o'clock brian and my dad finally get home and i tell my mom to get the girls ready for bed so she's taking care of the girls brian and i are sitting outside on the porch and you know i'm telling him everything that fucking happened and i tell him i'm like you know i really don't think that it's a coincidence that you get a security system installed in the house and then all of a sudden this weird shit starts happening like can you see the future or something and this all started that one day whenever you ran up to the bathroom acting really strange because as soon as he put the security system in our house creepy shit started happening like that one day wasn't even it like sometimes we would get home and you know i would take miley up to her room for nap time and all of her windows would be open the garage door would just open and close itself in the middle of the night so then you know i asked him what happened today because you know he apparently had a rough day too well apparently earlier whenever he went to go and get this cold medicine for miley right he went to the gas station that was right up the road and you know he gets out of the car he starts putting gas in the car while that's filling up he decides to run in and go and get some medicine he comes back out to the car he grabs the hose puts it back in the pump and then i guess he wanted to go in and get something else real quick so he runs in there and then he runs back out to the car he goes to pull away and some guy is literally holding the horn honking at him while he's pulling away and then he realized he's driving away with the hose to the pump and it literally rips right out of the fucking thing and you know a small fire started thankfully it was nothing major thankfully 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 but they had went and looked at the surveillance and after he went back in the second time somebody had went over to his car and put the pump back in the car and then just walked away so then after that you know he tells me about that that's creepy but then i bring up the fucking letter i found that was even creepier and i'm like you know i just find it so coincidental that somebody knows my name your name and our kid's name because at this point, it's he can't keep hiding this from me, okay? Him not telling me what is going on is putting my, our children in danger. And I was not fucking having it. Well, finally, he decides to tell me about his good old ex-girlfriend, Madison. And now I understand why we needed a security system in the house. Even though it really didn't do shit. Because the cops didn't even come while the fucking alarm was going off. Anyways, he said that because the one day while I was in the shower, the front door was open just like completely wide open and he didn't know how long it had been open for and you know he shuts the door and he's you know kind of just looking around seeing if anything's missing or anything like that and i guess that and i guess while he was looking around after you know he shuts the door he realized that there were two roses inside of his shoes so one inside of each shoe and apparently she used to put roses inside of his shoes to make them smell better what the fuck I'm at a loss for words. And whenever he told me that he was um, dealing with his ex-girlfriend before we started talking and hanging out, he really meant that he was filing a restraining order against her because she had been stalking him and would not leave him the fuck alone for like the past year and a half. He told me about how she would self-harm and take pictures of it, print the pictures out, and either tape them to the his dorm room door or slide them under the door. Um, if she found out that he was out at a party, she would call the cops on him and say that she just woke up from being knocked out because he beat the shit out of her. So, so they would literally come and arrest him at these parties. And then he would have to explain that she's a fucking psycho. Like this girl had fucking issues. Well, fast forward, him and I both changed our numbers. We moved far away from the campus, finally, because he had finally fucking graduated. And we were living in a new house. We made sure that our address was nowhere to be found. We instead were using a PO box at the post office so that way nobody knew our real address. We got a fucking security system. Like we had automatic lights 
all around our house and it would send a notification to our phones if any of those lights turned on or whenever a motion was detected outside anywhere around our house well you know brian finally got a job and we were both living like really good fucking lives we lived about like two minutes down the street from my parents which was nice and it had been a little while since the whole situation so i wasn't really worried about anything too bad happening because I figured since we pretty much did everything in the book that you can do when you're being stalked by someone that she wouldn't know how to find us. Like we even changed our license plate numbers. Like we, we made sure that like nothing, she couldn't track nothing back to us. Well, the one day Brian's at work and I'm at home with the girls, we're outside. We live in like um, a cul-de-sac. We live at the end of one. So, you know, there's that like circular part. So the girls are drawing with chalk with some of the other neighborhood kids. We're blowing bubbles. And I'm waiting for my parents because they're just supposed to take the girls to the fair tonight. Well, around 5.30 that night, Brian comes home from work. The girls are with my parents at the fair. Brian and I are finally spending time together, meaning we are taking a nap on the couch together. When all of a sudden, I get a call from my mom. And it's around 8.30 at night, which was weird because my parents don't stay out too late. And 8.30 at night was late to them. So they would have brought the girls back at around 7.45, 8 o'clock, unless the girls were sleeping over there. But usually we would have a conversation about that if they were going to sleep over there. So like I said, my mom calls me and she's like bawling her fucking eyes out. And she's like, oh my God, I don't know where the girls are. I don't know where they went. They're gone. They were right next to us. Then I turn around and they're gone. And I'm like woken up dead out of my fucking sleep. So I'm like, mom. Hold, like what happened what happened she was like the girls are missing i don't know where they are we called the police they're looking for them right now we were sitting at one of the bench tables and i went up to go and grab some napkins and your dad was using the restroom and when i turned around the kids were gone they weren't sitting on the bench anymore so by this time brian and i already have our fucking shoes on and we're already like hopped in the car on the way to the fair and luckily there were cameras around this fair so thankfully they have the license plate number of the car that the girls got into well they didn't willingly get in there and thankfully again madison didn't get too far because she went on like the main highway smart sucks for her but i mean good for me but um while the cops were chasing her down the highway she was swerving everywhere she hit into three cars and finally i think that they what is it called like a tire strip or whatever they a spike strip maybe that they put on the road so that way they can like stop a car like i guess blow out its tires or something yeah they put one of those down and they finally got her apparently in the back seat there was a duffel bag filled with children's clothes and brand new car seats and baby food so we think that either she planned on kept keeping them for a while or holding them hostage until brian would speak to her again um since then my husband well she went to jail first off but um, after that, my husband and I, we moved out of state and he ended up changing his last name because even though she was in jail for a long time, I wouldn't be surprised if she hired a hitman to come and um, unalive us. Okay, everybody, that is the end of today's story time. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of me, maybe hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want to send in your anonymous story time or you want to know how to send an anonymous story time, make sure to click the links down below in the description. But other than that, happy early Halloween and I will see you guys next Saturday with a new story time.